Hello, in this video we shall learn how to use the blend mode multiply in Darktable. We'll learn what it does, how it works, why it works and how to use it and we'll discover that it can be used to create some beautiful 1970s bloom colourful photos but most of all and more importantly maybe how to use it to get details back in our skies. I'm Nicholas and let's do this together. Let's start by looking at the mathematics behind the multiply blend mode. Multiply blend mode. So we have an image, um, the photo, um, which will give you a source. That is the picture you have on the screen at the moment, which will be, we'll call that A. And you have a module that you're using which the one you're, you're actually modifying at the moment, which we'll call B. So the idea is you have in the pipeline, you might have a long pipeline going up of multiple modules. And here we have source A and you have a new module on top, which is the module B. If you're in a normal blend mode, then module B will replace it'll modify and replace uh, the source A. If you use a multiply blend mode, then the resulting pixels will be the result of a function of A and B, which will be A multiplied by B. So here A and B are the individual pixels that correspond to each one. So it's worked out pixel by pixel, um, channel by channel, a red, green, blue. So there are all the numbers are multiplied across the whole picture. Um, the numbers are multiplied, but they are also normalized first before multiplying. So imagine if you're in a um, display referred workflow, then we know that RGB values, let's say if you're in eight bits, will be between zero, we will go from zero to 200 and 55 for each channel red and green and blue. So imagine you have a color in RGB which is uh, 128, 200 and 0. So uh, it's quite some red, a lot of green and no blue. This will be modified, normalized to 128 over 255, 200 over 255 and zero over 255 and that will give you the normalized value now um if you're working that is work if you're working in 8 bits if you're working in 16 bit well you divide by uh, 2 to the power of 16 anyway it's all normalized so the numbers you've got in a display referred uh, workflow the results will be these normalized values will be between 0 and 1 now in the scene referred workflow which is the one that we normally we should be working in now in dark table. We know that luminosity is not bounded. So um, although a majority of the, 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 the pixels will be will have values here between zero and one, it's now unbounded to plus in infinity. So we do have theoretically an infinite number of values between zero and plus infinity for these values of A and B. And uh, why is this important? Because if you're between 0 and 1, see so if you have a number between 0 and 1, let's take just the middle point, not point 0.5, and we apply the same layer, so the new module is kind of just um, a module which doesn't change any values, it just um, like an exposure module set at exposure 0, something that doesn't change the picture, then on a normal blend mode, the picture wouldn't change. But on a multiplied blend mode, all the values are multiplied, but multiplied by themselves. So black, which has three zeros, the result would be zero. So black stay black. In a display referred workflow, then white is one. So one times one is one. So white stays white. And all the colors in between, if you multiply a number that is between 0 and 1 by another number between 0 and 1, well the result is always smaller. 
So that means that in a display referred workflow, all the colors become darker. That's what happens if you use a multiply blend mode in Photoshop. And it will be the case uh, for, most, uh, for most of the picture we have. But what can happen in a scene referred workflow where the values can be greater than one. So if you have a value of 1.2 and you multiply by 1.2, if it's greater than one, then this is 1.44 so the values get greater and the luminosity increases so we can use the multiply blend mode as a contrast mode the darks become darker and we can make it so the lights become lighter and let's see how that works on, a, on an example so here we are in dark table with a JPEG I made with Affinity Photo, a white background, a black blob here, a dark gray spot and a lighter mid gray spot there. So just a JPEG, nothing much. Let's have um, an exposure module. Now let's switch that on. So the exposure module does absolutely nothing. So in a normal mode, um, which is the standard mode, this module is actually replacing the previous one. Um, if I make the exposure greater, then we can see what happens and it is replacing the other. If I go into um, multiply mode, then this is what happens. Um, everything's got darker. So now I have actually before, I have the source, which is this, and the expo, the, the so the source is, is that one, the picture, and the exposure, this uh, module, is the B, B source. So A is underneath, B is on top, and they're both identical. So I'm really, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying all the values by themselves. Now, if you have a look at the histogram, there are, we have a dark, um, a spike here at black. We have a larger spark, spike at white, and the two spikes here correspond to the darker blob and the mid-gray blob. And when I switch on exposure, the spikes go down. So everything is getting darker. Now, um, just quickly, why these colors? If we have a look at the color picker, let's click, let's remove the exposure. This is the original picture. We have the dark gray at 77, 77, 77, and the lighter gray with three values at 137. And if I switch that on, then I go down to 23 and 74. So everything is getting darker. Now you might wonder why 23, how is that calculated? Why 23? Well, if I show you the calculation here, um, what you need to do is get 77, which is the source color, divided by 255, which will normalize this. That is the A, times B, which is the same color because the exposure module didn't change anything. So it's uh, normalized by 77 over, over 255 as well. Those are multiplied. This is the um, multiply blend mode. It gives me a normalized value, which I need to multiply by 255 to get an RGB value, which will be between zero and 255. And the value is 23, which is the value I read here. So that confirms that um, this multiply blend mode is actually just multiplying two normalized values. Um, now let's have a look at this uh, slider here which is called the blend fulcrum and see what that does. This is going to be an important one. Let's switch that off. Now if I move the blend fulcrum up then I can see that the colors are getting lighter and if I move them just like that um, let's have it to 1.3 easy number. Now if I switch it off if you look at the spikes here now, I have two colors kind of in the middle of the histogram. And when I multiply them, then they've moved apart. The darker one has got darker and the lighter one has got lighter. Which means that I've added contrast. That is adding contrast to a photo. The black has stayed black, the white has stayed white, and the, all the values have moved apart. And they will move apart um, depending on this blend fulcrum. Now in the documentation it says that all the colors below the blend fulcrum get darker and all the ones above them get uh, lighter. But I'd like to show you a little ex little uh, experiment I did. 
So take a snapshot of that. And let's put this blend fulcrum back to zero. And let's move this exposure slider up to 1.3. Uh, to 1.3. Okay, I'll right click and just type in 1.3. And if I compare the two, if you look left and right, then they are absolutely identical. This blend fulcrum is therefore an exposure slider. Well, that's interesting. So we know what this blend fulcrum actually does now. Um, or what we could do is um, have a look at how to use this uh, method on some uh, practical examples. Now here we are with a photo of some um, macaroons taken with natural light that was a window light. And um, let's have a look what happens if I do the same thing with an exposure module. Now this is a raw file. So um, I've actually uh, corrected exposure, I've done the color calibration and a bit of filming just to get kind of a neutral starting point. And let's get a new exposure. Um, there we are, module, which is for the moment, I'm not touching anything. And let's put that into multiply mode. So what happens in multiply mode uh, when we have a color photo is everything's got darker and the colors have got Kind of more saturated, haven't they? Um, now, what I could be tempted to do if it's too dark is to move up the exposure module. Well, that will present some problems because now these whites are completely blown out. And if we have a look, let's remove those. If we have a look at the values here, if I move so absolutely a white there. Let's move that. So I have um, blown them out there, 255, which they weren't before. Um, you can see actually that some of the colors here, I'm in multiply blend mode, some of the colors have values are greater than 255. Um, that's because we're in a scene referred workflow. but. By moving the exposure up to compensate for all that darkness, really, I'm ruining the uh, the lighter points. Now, why is that? Well, the reason is because by adding an exposure, which is the same thing, I'm actually, these values here are quite high. And when I multiply a high value by a high value, it gets higher. And um, really, it's kind of the opposite I'd like. I'd like to bring up the the darks a bit uh, but without blowing out the highlights um, so really what I'd like to do what would be a good idea would be to add something that is a bit of a uniform gray color if I could add this multiply the whole image by a uniform gray then I'd have less of that effect of blowing out the highlights too quickly so using the exposure module was good to demonstrate in the first picture but it's not really very good uh, in practical use now there is one we could use so that is the original photo is we could colorize yes we could colorize so let's take a color any color now colorize the colorize module just adds a color on top of everything a uniform color now if i desaturate that completely then what i'm adding onto this um, is kind of a mid gray or a light gray on top of the whole image but I'm adding the same color to the whole image so if I multiply now I'm going to multiply every pixel of the image by the same number so I should have less of a problem with the highlights so let's check that and let's multiply um, now here I'm not in the scene referred workflow, but you have to be careful with this. So I'm not seeing the blend fulcrum. So if you don't see the blend fulcrum, go to the, um, the blending options, go to scene and the multiply here, you get the blend fulcrum back. So um, that is before and that is after. Everything is getting dark, but look at the highlights. I'm not blowing them out. So the blend fulcrum, which is the exposure, if you like, we can move that up and now what have I done? I've added contrast. 
uh, without blowing the highlights out too much. And I do have a control of the lightness. And I have a control of the source mix if you want to add. So this actually um, makes the uh, source more prevalent over the image which was underneath because colorize does not completely replace the uh, the underlying photo. It, there is the transparency I, I imagine to, to colorize. Um, so you have quite a lot of control over um, contrast with that. Um, another way to use multiply blend mode, this is just an example because well to be honest what am I doing? I'm adding contrast. Now why would I be using a colorize blend mode to add contrast where take a snapshot of this normally if I want to add contrast well I should have let's remove that and I should be able to add contrast let's say with the color balance RGB so I should be able to add contrast that's strange I'd had some there I should be able to add contrast with that and get something kind of similar between one and so on the left here we have the color eyes which is a bit darker and we have um, color balance RGB on the right and well apart from there's they're not quite the same lightness so if I add a bit of luminance so remove some luminance here and I also think that when you look at it like that then the color balance RGB does a better job um, so with that colorize module well you can get creative with that but I'm not sure it's the best module to add contrast. But it does illustrate the point of how the multiply blend mode works. And now if I have a look at another method we could use is instead of, um, so what we're looking for is grays, we're looking for grays uh, instead of multiplying by an exposure module. So one we could use is low pass. Now low pass um, blurs the photo. So low pass gives a blur. Now, if I'm blurring, then um, let's remove the saturation. So now I'm actually, um, I have some mid grays. So it's not quite uniform, but um, these colors are not as bright. Um, sorry, color picker. If I have a look at the values, then I had I was here at 245, 237, 209, and now they've gone down a bit, and I can control that with the dark, the brightness, and try and get something kind of a bit more uniform, and then go into so RGB scene here, and go into the multiply blend mode, and here I may be able to control the fulcrum there. And if I adjust the brightness, and I can get something where the highlights are not blown out, which is quite contrasty. Now, what's interesting with this kind of contrast with a low pass filter is the blur will give a bloom kind of effect on the photo, which could be something useful, something you might be looking for. There we are. So it is spacing out the values. The lighters are getting light. The lights are getting lighter. The darks are getting darker and I'm getting a bloom effect. So that is one um, way that's possible. If you use a blur with a multiply mode, then you get some kind of bloom. Um, well, the way I um, propose to use it on a, let's say, a real photo is actually by using a tone equalizer. So we'll do that with another photo. Just before we uh, have a look at another photo, um, I thought if you're not convinced by the bloom effect with the low pass filter, in version 3.8 we'll have a new module called blurs, where you can add blurs uh, with different shapes, diaphragm, blades, concavity, everything. And I've already set this up, just to go quickly. And now if I use blur with a multiply mode, yeah, you can see very clearly the bloom effect with high saturation and clearly something which is maybe very 70s, but at least a good illustration of um, the multiply mode with the blend. Uh, no, the blur, no, the blurs with a blend multiply mode.
Yes, that's it. Okay, next example. So here is a picture taken in Dordogne in France this summer. It was a nice day. We had quite a lot of sunshine. It was quite hot and the clouds came over and all of a sudden we had these lovely sun rays coming through. You can barely see them here, which is what usually happens to me is I take a picture of a nice sky with these sun rays and um, when I get home and look at the raw file, they're kind of gone. So <laughs> it's really annoying. Um, I do know how to get them back now, so I'll show you. Uh, there may be other methods. Um, probably are plenty of methods to do it, but I've learned one, so I'm going to show you that one. And it uses the multiplied blend mode. The first thing I'm doing, though, is I want to darken the sky a little bit. Let's do this quick and dirty. Let's just darken it just a little bit. Now, because I don't want to blur out the highlights at all, even when I multiply. So we have a sky that needs enhancing. Now let's go to the tone equalizer and target the center. I'm going to make a mask, gradient mask, and let's select the sky. There we are. And with another gradient, which I put backwards, I want to turn that round just to target the area where the sun rays are. That's more or less horizontal. Now I do not know if there's a tool to get these horizontal. In Lightroom I remember it was kind of shift. If you press on shift it goes horizontal. Dark table I don't know. I can never do this. Ah, there you are. See I let go of the mouse and it's gone. Now the mask I have here now covers the whole of the picture because I have a gradient going down and a gradient going up. What I want to do is get the intersection. Now to do that you need to go to the mask manager to the tone equalizer group. Click on that. So I have the two gradients and put the second one in intersection mode. There we are. So now I've targeted just the part of the sky that I want to work on. And now just pass this into multiply mode and voila. The light rays have appeared. Yippee! Now I do have some problems. Here is nice. That's far too dark and that's why I use the tone equalizer because what I can do now is kind of be quite liberal with this and get the sky back up there. There we are. Now it's very blue, very saturated. That can be worked on with um, the RGB uh, color balance module or even with, um, uh, there we are, what's it called? The color calibration, right? If you want to um, lower the colorfulness of the blues, let's say a little bit, that'd work. Anyway, um, that's not what to show you today. This is just to show you the multiply blend mode. And what can happen now, you see, is I have made that come out. Uh, I haven't actually touched um, the uh, the blend fulcrum, but you can. The blend fulcrum here is made to be adjusted to get exactly what you want. There we are. And you could imagine, now this doesn't work very often, if you duplicate the instance to double it. Now that is something is very 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 overboard but you do see the light rays um, coming through there but you see we do have a problem now with the colors I was talking about colors is that by multiplying and multiplying you are going to add a lot of uh, color casts or fake colors um, so be careful with that uh, no it's not a new instance I wanted to, I wanted to delete that and delete the duplicate because I think a photo should stay natural uh, we could enhance it much a little bit more by messing around here with this tone curve. Maybe something like that. Anyway, if you look at before and after anyway, before and after, the result is quite spectacular. And now maybe if I add some local contrast, maybe I could add it just locally and make that even better. But you see, I have a good starting point where the rays have appeared. There we are, and that is one of the uh, my main uses of the multiply mode, apart from the bloom I showed you, is to get um, textures out again. Um, and I can show you on another sky now. 
So on this last example, I have a photo taken this summer on the Atlantic coast of France of um, what we call fisheries. I don't know if they're called fisheries really. Anyway, the cabins um, on the coast where you um, come to fish at high tide and put big nets um, in those kind of crane things. I'll call them fisheries. No idea if it's the right word. Anyway, we have a photo here where the sky is actually looking very uh, washed out, very bland. Um, and I'd like to bring something back in there. Now, if you see the sky is very uniform, it's kind of um, perfect to use a multiply blend mode with the, expo the exposure module. So if I do a new instance of exposure, I can try and select the sky because I don't want to work at all on the uh, on the land on the on the on the rocks or on the uh, on the wood. So let's use a parametric mask. So I'll have a look at that mask, and we'll just mask out the darker parts of the image. Try and keep the sky in the bottom left-hand corner as much as I can. And um, so now I've got some parts here of the wood that have been selected. So maybe in the hue, I could select a zone, an area. Let's take a big area around here, there, just to keep the sky. So that's not big enough. I'll move the colors a bit to try and get everything back there. And now I have here some, some holes, which I can fill in with the feathering radius and maybe a bit of blurring. Now it doesn't really matter. I've got a little bit selected here. Um, I don't think that matters very much because what I'm doing is adding contrast. Now I could add a shape and uh, remove that. And I think I will do, I might do some videos on um, masking with multiple uh, drawn masks and parametric masks. Maybe that could be useful to you. Um, we'll leave it at that for the moment. So there we have, uh, the uh, the sky selected and um, let's turn this into multiply straight multiply and this is what we get so before and after so we've got quite a bit of detail back in the sky there so that's not bad we do have a shift in color though so it's kind of gone a bit greener if I want to make the sky come out a little bit more what I could do is use the good old tone equalizer Put this right click simple tone curve just so that the mask is just a black and white version, a uh, monochrome version of the image. And um, I need to use a parametric mask as well. I need the same mask really. Now, usually, I don't like using raster masks, but just to show that I can, I'm going to use a raster mask and use the same mask as exposure. Um, now the problem with that is now I have no way of tweaking the mask. I'm actually using exactly the same mask as I uh, just did for exposure. So it should work. Here, if I go onto the multiply mode, I'm back onto the display referred. So I'll go onto scene referred and blend mode multiply so now you see I have very dramatic now very dramatic sky the colors are off you might like them I don't I have some haloing now here around there um, so what I can do is use the blend fulcrum make it a bit less dramatic what I want is the detail I don't think I want the drama and it wasn't a dramatic moment. It was early in the morning. Um, everyone was asleep. And I just went for a walk. So if I can lift that up a bit. There we are. This is the area that plays on that. Now I'm not looking at the colours for the moment. Now by doing that and lessening the effect, I'm also getting rid of the halos. Now if I didn't want any halos at all, I'd have to do the mask again, I think but that I'll have to do for this uh, time. Now, so what I have, I'll compress the history stack. So I've been from here is the picture I had before. 
And now with two instances, exposure and tone equalizer in multiply mode, I have now the sky back kind of completely. The colors have gone. So what do you do to get the colors back? Back to the color calibration. And I'm going to have to rework the white balance. Now that thankfully works kind of automatically. So I've got the white balance back. It's a bit purple here, a bit red. So I could work out um, a little bit, uh, remove some red um, from these. Uh, there's lots of tweaks you could do. Get a new instance. I usually do a new, a new instance when I'm working with the channel mixer. If you uh, haven't watched the video on the channel mixer that I made, you could watch that if you want to understand how it works. Uh, really, what I'd like to do is to get this back is to remove some blue. Um, I'll just show quickly why. Because if I remove blue, it turns yellow. So I want to remove blue. I have a lot of red. I'm going to remove some blue. Now, if it doesn't work on there may be there that looks better and I will do a parametric mask and yeah, just do that the sky was okay I'm going to kind of remove the sky from the mask and just okay I'm not going to manage this very quickly am I I'll do this see if it's better on this one there we are so I could do it on there and do with a drawn mask. I'm going to do this quick and dirty. Um, take all that, all that, kind of there, there, round here, round here, with a lot of feathering. It's this area here, right? Really, I need to work a bit more on that. Uh, feathering radius. And maybe if I move the detail threshold a little bit, I actually get rid of a lot of problems. There we are. The video, I didn't want to do uh, anything on the color balance, but there we are. So now, off and on, the reds have gone a little bit yellow. Uh, to tell you the truth, I actually made a black and white out of this photo. So um, there we are. Let's compress the history stack now and just show that this is where we started with um, kind of very bland sky and now we've got a much more interesting sky and um, well there's a lot more work to be done on this I mean I need to work on the darker areas I need to refine it but the work on the sky is done the multiply mode has done its job so there we are for this video and I'll see you soon